Well, and you know, and going back to the money and success and our kids and stuff like that, we always told our kids growing up, you know, I don't really care what you do in this world for a job. I said, even if you decide you want to be a Walmart greeter, be the best Walmart greeter you can be and be happy with it. Because I had friends chase the dollar and some of them made some good money and they they hated it. They absolutely hated it. And it's easy. Trust me. It's easy to get trapped into that salary and those benefit. And I'm not knocking anybody. In fact, I would never, ever recommend somebody just quit their job and just chuck it all in. At some point, you may need to. You may have to. That's a personal decision. The best thing that happened to me was they eliminated my position because I loved my job and I loved what I did. But the business had changed so much. It was kind of that trapping thing. And it was like, no, it was a good kick for me. And it's been great. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life who want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. Today we get to speak with Kevin Colby, a content creator, video marketing specialist, coach, and founder of Kevin Colby Media. His life in media started on the radio and then led to TV, working with stations affiliated with Fox, NBC, CBS, ABC, and The CW. After television, Kevin started his own video marketing media business and now helps nonprofits businesses and entrepreneurs around the world get into and do more online video. He's also a husband and dad of three, including one with special needs. This conversation with Ken Colby was amazing and I can't wait for you guys to listen in. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast, man. I'm, I'm super excited. No, I'm really excited to be here. I appreciate you having me. Dude, Kevin, so tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started, and we talked a little bit about your t-shirt, but and you mentioned it was from your daughter. So tell us a little bit about yourself so the audience can know who Kevin Colby is. Yeah, well, so I um, I got my start in media and radio. I actually wanted to be in radio growing up along with a gazillion other things, and, mm -hmm. um, and I've been a Batman fan since Batman's ever been on. So that's why I love this t-shirt. She knows me well. Yeah. So, um, but I got in radio and I was in radio for many years uh, and then I had a chance to get into television and thought, wow, I really like this TV. It's like, you know, it's like radio, but it's got pictures. And I was yeah. in TV for a long, long time. My position was cut a few years ago and I just started my own business. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm now a content creator and I help people with video and I work with businesses. I work with a lot of nonprofits. I really, I just have a heart for working with people at nonprofits. Yeah. Work with other entrepreneurs, do my own stuff. So I, it's, that's it. A husband, great wife, much smarter, way better looking than me. And <laughs> uh, three kids, two married out of the house. Our youngest one has special needs, which has opened up a whole nother world for us. And that's, that's a little bit of me. Nice, man. Well, uh, thank you so much for sharing. 
the journey around radio mm-hmm. and television. I really want to dig in, not dig in really, but we want to see like how that experience helped you into doing what you're doing today. That is a great question. I don't know if anybody's ever asked that. I always thought my background in radio helped me, especially when I got into TV. So for a long time in television, I was a producer. And so I would create like commercials for the TV station, if you will, to promote Mm -hmm. different things. And then for years, then after that was a creative director. And so audio just became... I mean, radio is still kind of my first love, which I think is why I like podcasting and things like that. It's just yeah. like talk radio. But I think, you know, it's funny now when you get into it, that most people will tell you the, the most important part of video is audio. And so I think that's why I think of audio and layering and sound effects and the sound, not necessarily the, the best sounding mic and mm-hmm. everything, but just how you can make the audible part of it just as much of an experience then yeah. that can really help the video part. And so that gave me an appreciation for that. So then when I think podcasting came around and that became so big and mm-hmm. continues to grow, it's like, well, I've got that background in radio and it actually, the funny thing is I, I never had a desire to be on camera mm-hmm. ever. So I think being able to just turn a mic on and talk because you can't see anybody, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like a camera. And I think by doing that, it kind of prepared me for video. And then when I got into to television, uh, the first station I worked at was a very small TV station. Mm-hmm. And they paid me nothing. And they were like, <laughs> well, do you want to learn how to edit? Yes. Do you want to be on camera? Sure. Do you want to? Yes. I just, I just want to learn. You learn everything, yeah. And, and man, that's where I learned the basics of editing. I kept watching our production manager and I kept thinking, I think I could do that. So he showed me, Mm -hmm. this was when it was taped, not even digital. Yeah. And I was really bad, but I kept going at it because there was just something I enjoyed. And it's just Mm -hmm. one of those things that I, it's just evolved over time. So I, I look at the tools, how they evolved, how the gear evolves and things like that. And it's just like, it's easier now for anybody to get into it oh my God, and learn it. Easy. I mean, I, one of the last TV stations I worked at, I remember our first HD camera. Oh my God. And <laughs> it cost, you ready for this? $50,000. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. And the chief HD. engineer kept it. This is, this, is not, this is not full HD, right? This is HD 720p. Uh, probably. Yeah, probably. (laughs) And he kept it locked in his office. Mm -hmm. You had to go and, and basically be interrogated. I'm joking a little, but you know, sign all these papers Mm -hmm. just to use it. Yeah. And now, you know, this thing will shoot 4k. 4k. (laughs) And it's just like, and, and, and a heck of a lot cheaper. (laughs) Oh yes. (laughs) So it's just, it's amazing. So I, I think, You know, going from traditional media helped me appreciate digital media more. Yes. And how you could do things. I mean, that's why I get a kick out of now that some people, (laughs) you know, they're like, man, I've only got like 60 seconds for a short or a reel. I'm like, dude, we were doing things 30 seconds Mm -hmm. and 10 seconds and and 15 seconds. seconds, Yes. And you didn't get any extra time. (laughs) That's right. And on tape on that matter. Yeah. You're, you're editing on it. I mean, there's software now that'll speed up that 30 second clip creation mm-hmm. in two seconds. All you got to do is select a bunch of clips, oh, yeah. pop them in here, and voila, you got a 30 second clip. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember the first thing, the first time I edited on a digital box, it was an Avid. Mm-hmm. And up until now, everything was linear. All linear, yeah. And the first time I edited on there and I realized, oh my, this is amazing. And that was, that was like the, just the light bulb went off on how much this would help a creator yeah. <laughs> create because, you know, before you'd kind of be editing and you get to like, oh, I'm over 30 seconds. Cause we dealt a lot in 30 second commercials mm-hmm. and promos. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I got to start over. How can I cut this out? And you yeah. literally have to start all the way over from oh the my beginning. God. And uh, it would wow. it would take hours, 
in a production room just to produce a 30 second commercial. And not like these were like Super Bowl mm-hmm. Hollywood. <laughs> this is yeah, exactly. the way we had to do it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. See, see, I appreciate that because we bring in the experience and then you bring that experience to the digital world. I'm like, dude, you have it so easy. And I was actually listening to this um, video or watching this video. And and this gentleman was talking about programming and how programming got started. Mm. And the, the initial programmers, they were, you know, in their forties and, and, and 45s, that's when programming started. Mm. So yeah. they they brought in a, a, a the level of expertise, the level of thought into programming from a very like I mean very essentialism, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like being being very minimal on everything. Like C C programming is still done on processors, even to this day. It's been fifty years wow. since programming started, right? But now, like programming has becoming, it's AI taking over. So yeah, I love that. I love uh, going in the past. I'm like, dude, look at what they were able to do with the tech that they had. (laughs) There's no reason for us to even complain a bit. Oh, I remember my first Mac had a gig hard drive. And I Mm -hmm. thought, man, I'll never fill this thing up. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and now oh. it's like, what? I've only got a terabyte? That's yeah. all? <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. I need a terabyte. Oh, it's so funny. It's so true. And and you can fit a terabyte in the, you could, you could fit multiple terabytes in the palm of your hands. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's pretty amazing. Little, little bitty flashcards for, for our, com- our cameras. Yes. I mean, it's insane. It's, it's absolutely insane. So, <clears throat> What keep what keeps you motivated? So you you said you were you were in radio, then you were in television. Yeah. Now you're teaching people, especially nonprofit. So is that what keeps you motivated? Can keep coming back every day? Yeah, I mean it's different things. And and you know, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, there's those days where it's just like I, I just don't want to do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there's a and and I think the more I I've been away from going to the office, if you will. Sure. I mean, you know, if anybody's watching this, you can. I mean, this is a renovated bedroom. Yeah. It's an eleven by thirteen, but it's my office. It's mm-hmm. my studio. It's where I do everything. Mm-hmm. But you know, going to the office now is me walking upstairs to our second floor, <laughs> right? As opposed to going in and having yeah. a team. I think at the at the height we had twelve or thirteen on the team, mm-hmm. way more creative than me, and that was yeah. cool hanging out with them. But a lot of it is just being able to create without creating in such of a vacuum. You know, I mean, yeah. now <clears throat> if I'm doing a project for somebody, obviously they're the boss of it. Right. You know, I mean, I've got a, a dear friend who's also a client and I've produced a lot. I've actually, I've produced all of our online courses. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've probably done nine or 10 over three years. Wow. And She'll, but she'll, she'll say to me, you know, what, well, are you happy with it? And her name's Jessica. And I'm like, Jessica, it, it, are you happy with it? You, you're the one who has to be okay with it. Yes. But we kind of have become this co-producer on mm-hmm. it. And so the things that bring me joy, especially with the nonprofit is a lot of times I've been able to work with organizations that some I've been connected with and that's huge. Yes. Because I know that however I might can help them, it's helping them either raise funds or get their name out there because, you know, a lot of these guys are the heroes and and they're not making Absolutely. a lot of money and they're yeah. giving up so much. And so that's huge. I do like making money. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, and I said this to somebody the other day, I mean, we have to define our own success. Yes, and I've never been impressed personally or motivated, maybe that's a better way of saying it, by the people flashing their cash and flashing their stuff and things like that. Um, it's easy to say, wow, well, they've got it better. Mm-hmm. They've got more. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, are, are you helping somebody or are you using your gifts? You know, I mean, I, I, I personally believe God gave me gifts yes. to give away. And now there are days when I hoard them. <laughs> 
you gotta you gotta re you gotta rejuvenate sometimes, right? But you know, there's also that thing about I mean, being like being on YouTube, mm -hmm. dude. I I never really thought about YouTube as a job, if you yeah. will, or a career mm -hmm. until I got on my own, and and then it took a while. And then when you're like you're connecting with somebody in Scotland yeah. or Australia or mm -hmm. right down the road, it's like wow. That's neat mm -hmm. just to be able to do that or somebody find a video and go, wow, I really, this is the one I was looking for at the moment. You're like, yes. oh yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. So it's just that, you know, and then also from, from a, a family standpoint, you know, it's being able to put food on the table, mm -hmm. doing something I love to do that a lot of times doesn't feel like work, if you know what I mean. Oh, it, you know, I'm right there with you, man. This is entire reason why I started the podcast because I wanted to do something that I wanted to do yeah. for myself. It's something that I wanted to experience and go through this journey of learning about myself and being able to interview folks like yourself, like men and people that are growing that took the little bit of slice of information that they had and expanded it. And, mm. you know, it's like, Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And and the tools that we have now, I mean, if you just go back to it, I mean, it's holy cow. I mean, there's so many things out there that that are are free and easy to use. Not talking about the software we were trying to use a second ago. We won't talk right. about that. But but there's things out there that, you know, it's just there's never been a better time, continues to be a great time to be a content creator yeah. on any level. And it's just, it's a great time to be alive. You know, I just, uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Darren Hardy, mm -mm. but I just got an email from him. He's a, he's a big um, speaker. He, he sends out these daily emails. He's, he's, he used to produce these CDs called the Success Journals. Mm. So anyways, he sent an email recently. He talks about in the next couple of years, in the next few years, the entire world is going to make more money than in the, than they have in the past hundred years. That's, I mean, that's, in, it's hard to even wrap your head around. It is. It's absolutely insane to wrap your head around it because you got to really look at, okay, what, what does he really mean? And the era that we're entering as creators, right? So, so a lot of the economy has changed. Mm -hmm. Spotify wants to pay you. Facebook wants to pay you. Like just now I saw that, hey, do you want to convert your account to a professional profile? We'll pay you for reels. TikTok mm -hmm. wants to pay you. Everybody wants to pay you because you are a content creator. You are an influencer. Well, the reason they're doing that is that, that they want you to stay on their platform. Yeah. Right? They want you to stay on their platform mm -hmm. so that you can continue to bring traffic to their platform. But all of that is going to change and has been changing for the past 10 years, actually, with blockchain, with Web 3.0, with NFT. And what's possible is, is just my, like, my mind is blown oh, just from yeah. studying and, and learning about this stuff in the social media marketing world that I was at, you know, last month. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, you're talking about the money too. I, yeah, I, I wasn't that far into TV before I realized once I, I was, and I wasn't making a ton of money then, but mm -hmm. I was already making more money than my dad did, was yeah. when he retired from, I think it was Bell South or at and or whatever it was. And he mm -hmm. wasn't a corporate job. He was more like a blue collar guy. Yeah. And I guarantee you, he's he worked harder than me, you know. And and I thought, wow, that's just it's it's amazing. And you know, again, you you can, I think in what we do, there's the potential. The I don't know that there's a, a ceiling on the potential we right. have to earn, but I think the danger is then the money becomes the thing. Right. And, and uh, you know, and, and the, I think I go, it goes back to the success thing. It does. You right. It, you're, you're absolutely right. It, it, it all comes down to what's keeping you comfortable. Yep. 
what's keeping you happy, what's keeping you moving forward and growing and and yeah. And that's that's something that I teach my kids. You know, I have yeah. three kids as well. But they're a lot younger, you know, 12, 12, 7, and 4. And so the reason, the other reason that I did the podcast is so now they have something to look at, you know, learn from. Yeah. When I'm gone. And they know that anything is possible. Because I want to show them that, hey, anything you put your mind to, you can achieve, you can create, you can live. So I helped set up. A YouTube channel for my kids and they they're they're recording videos they're editing videos and that's cool they're putting it all out on the on their own and now you know they're comfortable in front of camera at such a young age we had to work at it I mean you I mean you you were working on TV but I had to work at it for the past three four years and like you said you know talking on the radio to talking on a podcast it helped me get a little better yeah with that well, and, you know, and, and going back to the money and success and our kids and stuff like that, I, we always told our kids growing up, you know, mm-hmm. if, I, I don't really care what you do in this world for a job. I said, yeah. even if you decide you want to be a Walmart greeter, mm-hmm. be the best Walmart greeter you can be and be happy with it. Yes. You know, because I, I, I've had friends chase the dollar. And some of them made some good money and they, they hated it. They absolutely <laughs> hated it. And it's easy. Trust me. Mm-hmm. It's easy to get trapped into that salary and those benefits. And, yeah. and I'm not knocking anybody. In fact, I would never, ever recommend somebody just quit their job no. and just chuck it all in. At some point, you may need to. You may have to. That's yeah. a personal decision. The best thing that happened to me was they eliminated my position because I, I loved my job and I loved what I did, but the, the business had changed so much. Mm -hmm. It was kind of that trapping thing. And it was like, no, it was a good kick for me. Mm. And, uh, it's been great, man. That's, it's been amazing talking with you, Kevin. Welcome back to the episode. It's been so much fun talking with you, Kevin. Let's take the audience through some practical application of what you've been helping nonprofits and how can a nonprofit looking to utilize the expertise that you're sharing, you know, take action? Well, I mean, I think a lot of what I've done with the nonprofits have helped them with video stories, as I call them. Like there was one organization that was rooted in foster care and adoption, and they just didn't have any stories of families sharing why they were doing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like one video we worked on is for something called respite care, which my wife and I were foster parents for a long time. And and we would do respite care, which means when a family just needed a break. Yeah, that you would keep that child for a while. Well, Mm. there's a need for that. So, you know, it's like, okay, then how do we get the word out about that need? Well, let's let's focus on a family that served as a respite family and share their story about who they are and why they do it. And then that can inspire somebody. And that's been a lot of it. Mm. I've worked with some on their YouTube channels just to, you know, kind of, change it from just a dumping ground to more of a storytelling, more of a sharing who they are yeah. and seeing YouTube as a great way just to continue to keep their focus out there. You know, and I've worked with some individuals. I mean, like there was one lady uh, that reached out to me that um, I, for- I forgot the exact organization, mm-hmm. but it turned out her, her youngest son had a very similar condition to our son. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'll be more than happy. And they were trying to do a GoFundMe to raise just a ton of money. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I get a text from her one night and she goes, you're not going to believe this. And she screenshots and somebody had made like a $25,000 donation. And she said, do you know this guy? And I said, (laughs) no, nobody I know have 25,000, but yeah. And I did a little research and it was some philanthropist billionaire philanthropist who saw the video and felt moved enough. Mm. And I thought, you know, that's a good day because then, because a lot of folks, especially, you know, if you're not used to it, but you're, you're pouring your heart, 
you're sharing your story, you're hoping it's making a difference. Yeah. Because then it, a lot of times you, you've got to ask for that money. You know, it's like if somebody yeah. doesn't want to buy me a coffee, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But when you're an organization and you can live and die on those funds and then you yes. go through a pandemic and then we go through bad times and, and what do people do is like, well, you know, probably won't give as much now to this or whatever. So that's what I've enjoyed doing and, you know, being able just to, to see people affected. I mean, I, I've, I've done a couple of projects where in a community that, that was, uh, it was a very low income community that was mm -hmm. horribly ravaged by a hurricane. Wow. And I got to be on the ground interviewing these beautiful people and just being able to take their story and then hearing back from, you know, the founders saying, you know, if it hadn't have been for you, we wouldn't have raised the money or we used your video to recruit this business to yeah. come out and help us. And I think that's when it just shows the power of video again mm -hmm. in a different way. It, uh, yeah. You know, it's not just the affiliate link and all this other right. stuff. Um, <laughs> but I just, you know what, I mean, my recommendation for any nonprofit out there is just like, use what you have and share your story. And you've yes. got a story. Yes. You personally have a story of why you're even invested in it. Mm -hmm. I've got a really good friend who's, is it the COO or CMO? It's one of those C something O's. Uh -huh, C suite, yeah. <laughs> and of uh, with an ALS uh, organization. And I didn't know it until he took that position that the reason he wanted it is because his mother had passed away from ALS years oh, ago. Oh, wow. When you know that, that it's like, okay, well then now you've got a whole different story to tell. So how can you position that, you know, to help people? So it's just, it's just really cool. I don't know. I totally love that. And it makes a lot of sense. We all have a lot of stories. Recently, I've been reading Story Worthy by Matthew Dix. It's a really powerful book. He, he actually calls something called uh, Homework for Life. Mm. gives you homework for life where, where, where all he's saying is that at the end of the day, just take five minutes and write down a sentence of a story that occurred that day. Oh, That's yeah. It. And then you can pull back on these stories anytime in any situation. And people, and one example he gave was this lady calls and she's crying her eyes out. She's like, oh my God. I can't believe what this homework for life has done for me. And it's, it's just made me made my days as long as a week, uh. my weeks as long as a month, because I am living every single moment. And then she hangs up. So the guy doesn't even know who this lady was that thanked him for this homework for life. I was like, wow, that is inspiring. So it's like, yeah. I, it gave me goosebumps just listening to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, you know, if we go back to just video mm -hmm. and views, I mean, views are people. Views are people. And, and Absolutely. You, know, you know, it's easy to get caught up in the numbers and stuff like that. But if it's like, okay, those are somebody that's taken, you know, that, that's watched something mm -hmm. that's maybe been moved to share it. Yes. Uh, that's maybe left a comment. Just thanking you for, I mean, you know, you, you do, the, you do the silly video on like, you know, how to change your thumbnail. I, yeah. I'm making something up, you know, yeah. and then somebody's like thanking you for doing that because yes. it saved them time. Yes. And I'm like, well, it may not have changed the life, but somebody appreciated it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> it, it is. You know, that's just it, cool. It it's absolutely is. And, and the time and space that we're living in right now, right? Yeah. It makes learning so much easier because essentially that's what they're doing. They're trying to save time. They're learn they just need one tidbit. They probably went through 10 different videos. And this video is what solved them a problem because sometimes some videos have a lot of Yeah. I I don't even I don't know what to say about it. But <clears throat> it all comes down to okay, have this video solved the problem? Yes. I want mm -hmm. to thank the person and I'm on my way. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. We've all watched videos like, okay, I need to change 
the dryer motor in my dryer or something or or my dishwasher. Like right now, yeah. I got I got to change out the timing motor in my dishwasher because it's been running for eight hours. I'm like, we turn it on at nighttime. <laughs> we were, we were up at five a.m. and it's still running. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> I think they should be done by now. <laughs> they should be done by now. Come on now. So now we got to, you know, hand wash the stuff. But I'm going to go find that video. I'm going to find the right part. I'm going to change it. And that's the power of the video. I mean, back in the days, you would have to call somebody to come over and fix that oh, for yeah. you. I mean, the power of video, power of storytelling and, and video uh -huh. format is, is as old as time itself because we remember watching... Charlie Chaplin. There's mm -hmm. no audio. There's just a really funny soundtrack and him moving really fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it well, all Yeah, a lot of the old shows, I mean, uh, and and movies, I mean, even even an action movie at some point has some kind of storyline. Yes. Has something. Well, some don't, but most of them do, you know. Even Transformers. Even Transformers had a little bit of had story. A, yeah, had had kind of a story. <laughs> Oh my God, this is so much fun, Kevin. Oh my God. All right. So we talked about what, what people can do. Tell a story, use whatever you have. We have $1,000 cameras. I was talking to somebody, I was talking to a friend of mine earlier and he's like, we are all walking around with $1,000 cameras with 4K. And you just mentioned that earlier too. People have used these cameras to shoot feature length films. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I I mean I remember when I was working for a Fox station mm -hmm. and the show House was on with Hugh Laurie and yeah. I remember they were they were doing an episode I think the premise was there was a a, a, a building collapse and this mm -hmm. lady was trapped underneath and the cameras they shot the show with were too big to go in the space they had to build yeah so they actually shot it with like a DSLR camera. Which now would be like, yeah, okay. okay. But it was making like headline news and variety, you know, in Hollywood. It's like, you know, first major production to use like this consumer camera. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Okay. And now you've got Hollywood directors, mm -hmm. uh, Stephen uh, Sotomayor, or I can't yeah, think of it. Yeah, yeah, Sotomayor. He's like, I'm only using iPhones now and mm -hmm. iPads to shoot stuff, you know. Yeah. And it, you know, the, the, I don't have the right gear. I'm sorry. Is just an excuse. It, it is. just is. It's 100% you know, excuse. You may not have the gear you want. Yeah. But you know, if you're on your phone, <laughs> you're on your phone on Amazon trying to find the right camera, <laughs> get off Amazon and shoot, <laughs> shoot, please shoot. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. I love that so much. And, and that's one of the reasons um, we, we've got Sita going on. Uh, over at uh, Ecamm. I'm, I'm doing a 30 day video challenge for the fourth year, just cool. so people can just get in front of a camera and just yep. talk your mind out. Because the more you talk to the camera, the better you can tell a story, the more yeah. comfortable you'll be looking at yourself recording a video. Yep. And that's, that's another thing that you should start start avoiding, use the back side of the camera. So then you don't even have to think about what you look like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it's got a flip out screen and it just messes with you, then flip the screen around. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I love your idea about use the back side of the camera. I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many. In fact, that might not be a bad idea because you tend to like look at the lens if you do that. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I mean, I've told people before when they've said, "Well, I don't, I you know, I don't, I I just don't know what to do," you know, for my first video, and I'm mm -hmm. like, "Make that your first video." Yeah, that is your but first video. I, I don't even know what to talk about, but just get it out there yes and then all of a sudden you realize oh okay i did it everything's okay the world didn't end i'll yeah. do another one. <laughs> oh my god this is so much fun kevin we've come to a point where I've, i asked uh, these fun little questions i've asked all of my guests this question and it helps me connect on a deeper level so what is the one hobby that you wish you got into <sighs> So I know you asked me this on the forum, but I want mm -hmm. to change my answer. Sure, um, go for it. Nobody knows that. that I wish right now. I had done piano. Ooh. And I had the opportunity. I have great parents, but my parents said, do you want to learn piano when I was little? And I was like, no. And they were like, okay. 
<laughs> and I wish they had said, I tell you what, we're going to give you piano lessons. I mean, I love guitar and I love mm -hmm. music, but I think that's one that I just, you know, when I've, I've seen the Billy Joel's and the Harry Connick's and it's like, man, I wish I could play piano. So that, that would probably be the one that still eludes me. I mean, I, I think I put guitar down on the form, mm -hmm. but then later I thought, you know, probably, probably piano was mm -hmm. the one that was offered to me that I really wish I had gotten on. You know, um, a lot of my friends that are from China or Korea, I think it's Korea, they are required to take piano lessons. Wow. I was like, wow, that is amazing because it opens up a totally different mindset. Yeah. Right? Like, wow. All right. What did you want to be when you were a child? You know, I wanted to be a lot. I did want to be on radio. I wanted to be a DJ. For a longest time, though, probably more than anything, I wanted to be a policeman. Mm. Which is probably still to this day why I have such a, a huge respect for policemen and in any type of emergency worker. Yeah. Um, but then there was other things. There was one point where I wanted to be a stunt man, <laughs> probably because I fell down enough and not got hurt. I don't know. Uh, no. There was a point where I wanted to be a social worker. There was mm. a point where I wanted to be a youth pastor. But I think probably more than anything is I wanted to be a policeman. Nice. I actually, in the funny story, I actually wanted to be a policeman too. And I told my wife that. I was like, what are you going to do? I don't know. I just want to try it out. You know, yeah. I wanted to try out to be a fireman, a policeman and a stand up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, why not? All yeah. Right. Yeah. Love it. What is your favorite movie or TV show? And my favorite movie, even though I love the Dark Knight trilogy mm -hmm. from Christopher Nolan, my favorite movie, though, probably of all time is Saving Private Ryan. Oh my God. Oh my God. That takes back. I, I, you Ooh. know, there's only been three movies that I can ever remember when it was over in the theater. It was mm -hmm. just either quiet or sobbing. One was The Passion of the Christ, mm -hmm. which uh, Mel Gibson did. One was Schindler's mm -hmm. List, and one was Saving Private Ryan. And I didn't even realize it that there were a lot of vets, you know, from Vietnam and stuff, but still yeah. had had memory but oh my word wow. i'm a tom hanks fan anyway but but from a movie standpoint mm -hmm. that would be it i mean i i have a list of best of <laughs> all times i mean you know i i love you know true grit the newest mm -hmm. one uh with jeff bridges and i love 310 to yuma you yeah know, raising arizona but yeah overall overall even besides the batmans would be that one and tv show mm -hmm. i gotta say probably 24 oh Nice. I got so hooked on that and uh, actually got to meet Kiefer. And, oh, and, yeah. and yeah, when Check I was at uh, the a Fox station, we, um, you know, because 24 ended and mm -hmm. then they brought it back for like a 12 part miniseries. Okay. Live Another Day. And yeah. they said, hey, I tell you what, Fox said, we're going to run a contest and we're going to bring 12 people out and and we're going to do a special VIP thing in New York. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the ones they picked. Nice. And so it was on an uh, aircraft carrier in New York, oh. VIP, got to meet the cast, got to be there and hang out and uh, got to steal a pillow. This is over here. Nice. And, um, but yeah, I, I would say just because that, that really changed how a TV show could be done and formatted because everything was in real time and then oh, how wow. they yeah. did it with the boxes and, you know, and not every episode was great, but yeah. yeah, still to this day, that would probably be my favorite, my favorite drama, my favorite comedy probably of all time is Everybody Loves Raymond. All right. Okay. Uh, I just, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those, I can watch it. I've seen the episode a thousand times uh -huh. and I'm still laughing like I've never seen it. Well, Seinfeld does that one for me <laughs> yeah, to be an all-time comedy. I've been recently re-watching The IT Crowd on Netflix. Oh, and that that is one is <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Especially episode one of season two, you can't go wrong. Like, I'm just <laughs> can't <laughs> sit <laughs> still. Yeah. It's Our oldest good. son told us about that. I was like, Dad, you've you've got to watch this show on Netflix. And we yeah. started watching it. It was like, oh, that is it's it's <laughs> so funny. 
Yeah. Oh. I'm wondering if I can, you know, talk to one of the one of those guys and bring him on the podcast. It'd be funny. Go for it. Yeah. All right. Next question. What movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it? Well, I mean, it's got to be one of the Dark Knights. I'd have to get to play Batman. Come on. Why not? Yeah, I'd probably be an old Bruce Wayne, the retired, you know, in the alternate universe. But, uh, yeah. you know, which supposedly Michael Keaton is going to do in the next Flash movie. He's going to. Or the flash really movie, you know? michael keaton's doing it that yeah i know I mean, that's that's out there i mean that he's getting more buzz than actually the star of the movie yeah you know? <laughs> but uh but yeah really okay i'm i'm i i need to go look that up because i think ben affleck did a pretty good job because he was an older batman also yeah. right yeah. he did a pretty good job and he like he played bruce wayne from a very different angle than how um Christopher Nolan, not Christopher Nolan, um, what's his name? Christian Bale. Christian Bale did. Yeah. So it was it was really interesting to see that that disparate. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I remember when Warner Brothers cast Michael Keaton. Yeah. Because I just I not that I know anybody there, but I just remember I was reading the trade yeah. and yeah. all everybody was like, What are you kidding? Him? No. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> that they rushed a trailer out mm -hmm. just to let people know we know what we're doing we know no music i mean it was just like a raw like two minutes and i yeah. was at a theater when it played and people were like oh okay okay that looks pretty good and it and it became so popular yeah <laughs> the story goes people would call the theater just to see when the trailer was playing they would buy a ticket go watch the trailer then they leave they would not even stay for the movie <laughs> they would see the movie <laughs> Oh, that that shows that goes back to our point, right? Story, yes, makes yeah. so much. Like, even when they were doing um, Batman versus Superman, yeah, and the teaser for it, and here's here's Batman standing, looking at all these screens, I'm like, you know, just breathing, and I'm like, whoa, there's so much there. Yep, yep. Oh my god, they did it again. So. DC versus Marvel is a is a great question that we could like totally go after, but now is not the time. <laughs> it's a different but podcast. <laughs> it's a different podcast episode, and which brings us to the next question: Who is your favorite superhero? Uh, Batman. Batman. Come on, hands down. Yeah, hands down. yeah. It's it's funny because I used to collect comic books. In fact, mm -hmm. I still have them all. But I just, it got so expensive and I wasn't reading them because I, I, the art is what I was always drawn to first. And then the story would have to hold me. Yeah. And I can't draw. I can't draw a stick man. My stick man doesn't even look like a stick man. That's how <laughs> bad I draw. And, but it's funny because I grew up collecting more Marvel stuff, mm. Spider Man and stuff like that. And then when I finally got into Batman, I'm like, ooh, I like this guy. Yeah. So, yeah, hands down. By far, Batman. Well, it's two for two today because my last guest was also a Batman fan. In fact, he had a poster of Batman right behind oh, him. Oh, that's cool. Next to Benjamin Franklin and and uh, Confucius. So <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool. That sounds like a joke, you know? <laughs> you guys walk into a bar. <laughs> and it's Benjamin Franklin, Batman, and Confucius. <laughs> And now your turn. Tell us the joke. What did it say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. Last question. If you were a board game, what would it be? Oh, man. <sighs> Trivial Pursuit. Trivial Pursuit. All right. I, just, I like trivia. Yeah. I sucked at the game. <laughs> Because I was always like, oh, man, I don't know any of these questions. I'd always have to pair up with somebody who's much smarter than me, who's which is basically smarter. anybody in the like, room. Let me ask a question. You answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me let me read the card. You answer it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just I mean, I'm just I'm fascinated with trivia. Just fascinated with it. No, it's 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 trivia is absolutely amazing. In fact, I don't know if you know the story about Guinness Book of World Records, mm -mm. but Guinness as a beer was doing really bad. They were almost bankrupt. And 
so they're like, all right, we need to do research. We need to see what the heck people are doing at the bar. So they go to the bar and people are talking about trivia all day long. I'm like, hmm, that's a pretty cool idea. So they hired this person who then created the Guinness Book of World Records. And they're like, all right, we're asking all the people. Unreal. What is the craziest thing you've done? And that's where the book came out. And now everybody's reading the book. And they're like, oh, yeah, give me a Guinness. <laughs> and you know what? I I had never put the two together. Mm-hmm. I just assumed I didn't. Well, I hadn't assumed anything. That That's unreal. But we'll show you, though, mm-hmm. how, you know, the idea was really to probably help sell the beer, right? Yes, it's absolutely. <laughs> that's that's crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, story, right? They created a story, they created intrigue, and now they're selling beer. Like, yeah, we're good, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, and then there's other shows, like, I, I, don't, I don't know if you remember, That's Incredible. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> with like, John Davidson. Yeah, yeah, he was the host. <laughs> We used to watch that show back in oh. the days. <clears throat> so much fun. Man, this was a ton of fun conversation. Thank you so much for taking your time and sharing with the audience. But it all comes back to story. You know, get your story. Mm-hmm. And we all have a ton of stories. We just talked about so many different stories. And if you can comment or, you know, send a message on how many stories did we tell in this one episode. Oh, yeah. I'm sending a t-shirt over to you because (laughs) that's going to help me as well. Kevin, where can my audience find you? You did mention you had a YouTube channel. So yeah, I do. It's, it's, uh, I'm Kevin Colby on YouTube, my website, kevincolby.com. And then I also have kind of a, what I call my media hub. It's kevincolbymedia.com. Nice. Home of my podcast and video and and maybe blog. I, I joke because I think there's four articles up there. But um, but e- either way, but YouTube would be great uh, or the website. Awesome. We'll be sure to include all the links in the Thank show you. notes. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Kevin. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for having me. Take care. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on Hacks and Hobbies. We absolutely appreciate your contribution. You can find additional notes on hacksandhobbies.com. Please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today. 